Hiya, it's Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today we are doing a load of Christmas cards on our Cricut. So let me just go through. First of all, what I have is 30 cards here. What I have is 30 fronts and 30 inserts. I haven't actually got the actual cards because I don't want to cut those out on my Cricut. I have card bases that will work. This is designed to fit an A6 card. However, you can easily make these work for your US um, card size. So uh, the four and a half, uh, is it four and a quarter by five and a half? Because what I've done, if I'll just show you, is that the top here and the bottom are two separate pieces with a piece across the center of paper. I will explain all the colors and everything in a minute, but the point is that you could easily move those. So let me show you just briefly. So first of all, an A6 card front would be this size here that I've got here roughly. And then here is your US four and a quarter by five and a half size. So if we move it to that so that we're even on the top and the two sides, all you would need to do is jiggle those when you actually stick it down so that it just adjusts like so. So I've designed it particularly because I'm gonna put this design in my store so you can download it. So I've designed it particularly so that you literally do not have to adjust anything here on the actual Cricut. You can cut it absolutely as it is. The only adjustment you make is when you stick it down. And that is obvious, obviously, when you stick it onto the car front, you, you stick it where it needs to fit. So you will see here that what I've got is 30 cards. I've got two halves and then a strip across the middle. You will notice that these are in certain colors. What I have got is 15 colors. And what I did was I did two cards tops of each color and two bottoms of each color and two strips across the middle of each color. Now this means that if you choose 15 papers, you can then cut it will just it can be pattern papers which is what i've got but to make it easy to distinguish the sheets when it comes to the making part of it i have put them as different colors because otherwise if you didn't do that it would try and put all the elements onto one sheet so i've deliberately done it like that so that you've got effectively 15 sheets now if you don't want to have the 15 different patterns, then obviously you could reduce that down and um, adjust your colors here on the color sink by just taking some of those colors out. And you can see quite clearly here, for example, one is the gray there. So you've got a gray there and a gray strip. So I've got two strips, two circles. Sorry, I forgot the circles as well. So two of the circles and that will be two tops and two bottoms of the card there. So if you wanted to adjust the number of um, color patterns, papers that you use, then obviously just drag and drop some of the, so from here you could drag that up and just reduce that down and make it less colors if you wanted to. However, I've done it that way for the moment because I thought it's a lot of cards and you don't want them to look too similar. You want them to be fun and funky together, but you, I thought you still wanted lots of patterns. Now, what I actually have done, and I will show you, is I've got double-sided papers. So I'm literally gonna cut them out and then I will flip one of each of these to the opposite side of my pattern paper. So what I did first of all was I created the boxes using the shapes and I did squares. I did one first by using my base template that I just showed you that I had there when I was showing you whether it would fit a six and I created one card, not with the image, just with the uh, base and the circle, etc. I then hit duplicate and I duplicated it five times. I then um, 
duplicated that row I grouped it and then I duplicated that row until I had 30 cards subsequently as I did that I thought that it would make a really nice thing to have the insert on there with the writing on it with our sentiment so I then went back and I just used a simple um rectangle using the square and my template and I made it to size and I did exactly the same thing I created all of the um, sentiment bases before putting the writing on it you will notice that the sentiment bases are in a slight gray tone now I am intending to use a white cardstock however if I used white on here it would push it on the same page as my white cuts for my animation as it were so I wanted to differentiate it so that it would put it on a different sheet because it's not going to be done on the same white card as I would be cutting for these so I wanted to make sure that it separated it when I got to the mats the next thing I did was I did all my actual sentiment writings now I took some sentiments from um actual sentiments that were part of the access and some that were just that I had already and others I actually wrote myself you go to my store and you get this from me and you download it it will then when you go to make it it will tell you what images you don't own so if some of those are the sentiments and you don't really want to purchase them then just delete the ones that I've done that are um ones that are ready made and that you would have to purchase and literally go into text and redo them or you may find that there's some already done in text that I had already written that you could um, actually like that one that says happy Christmas you could actually just copy and paste that across onto the other ones as well so you you have options there rather than just purchasing them as they are and the same goes I guess with the actual images I went through and I found sort of fun characters and items that to put on the front but there's a hundred more that you could choose from I played around with some of those as well to make some of my sort of non-Christmas images into Christmas images so if you haven't got Christmas in little characters uh, but you've got characters make them into Christmas ones by adding a little Christmas hat like I've done here I mean it's really simple to do so basically as you can see after I had done the sentiments and I had created obviously my card fronts here as I said all I did was go through into the images here and I just picked a whole heap of different characters that I thought were kind of cute so the next job uh, having done all the colors here for the different uh, patterned card stocks I obviously didn't want I wanted to make sure that none of the colors that were part of the images uh, matched any of these because I wanted to make sure that all my pattern card stock didn't suddenly cut out a snowman on the pattern card stock because I'd accidentally used the same color so I also wanted to make a big reduction in the colors because when I went through here before there was like seven were well, probably ten different browns so I spent a lot of time it took a lot of time but the other thing I found it does do when I open it for some reason it seems to alter the order um, and it starts putting some of the characters behind um, like the circle or the circle behind and the character behind the whole mat here it doesn't really matter you don't need to sort it out so it shows in the right order wow. then you know it's going to be fine because nothing is really determined by the order of the layers here so it's not a big deal okay so you can see there's quite a lot of mats there'll be 40 and of those 15 will be your pattern papers and five will be your sentiment sheets so that's 20 so it's 20 colors believe it or not it's still quite a lot but you've got a lot of actual images going okay on. so the next thing that i need to do i've already um selected my pattern papers but i haven't yet sorted out my plain papers so what i'm going to do to do that and the way that i like to do it is i click on make it 
um, and as you saw it shows you the mats so I can then go through and think right I need five sheets of 12 by 12 that in white that I want to write on that will go on the inside of my cards things like like this one I could see that I could get away with doing this on a six by six so you can play around that way as well and this is why I like to do it this way sheet by sheet looking at exactly what I need making sure I've got every sheet ready and then once that's done we are going to go ahead and cut right, so the first thing I need to do is put my marker in I've got the Cricut Midnight pen and the reason I'm using that one is because I know that it writes really nice okay now the reason I'm putting the marker in is, is that I know that the first five sheets are the ones that are going to have the right okay so my Cricut is set to cardstock That's so we're going to pop that in and we're going to get going by pressing the little Cricut head and what it should do is do the writing and then do the cutting now I'm just going to show you the first one of the writing just so you can see how it goes isn't that gorgeous and then what I'll do is I'll whip through the next lot because obviously I don't need to keep these on their mat. Okay, so here we are on the last cut of the inserts. Um, I've been peeling these ones off. I haven't been leaving these on the mat. So now I want to take my marker out because I don't need that anymore. So there's no point leaving it in. And then the next one is the first one of my patterned papers. And the computer's actually reminding me that I don't need the marker, so that's good. And all I need is my fine tip uh, blade. Now, these papers are double-sided. You can barely see it on this one because it's quite a delicate pattern. So the plan is to be able to flip them. But now, just while that's finishing cutting, here is the big pile of the inserts. So you can see they're all piled up and ready to go. So now that one's finished. And then just quickly show you. So you can see here, that's my circle. So that'll be that way, but I can, you can I think you can, oh, hang on, I know, I'm going the wrong way. There you go, you can just see the pattern on the other side. So I'll be able to use it both ways round. And these ones I'm peeling off. So every time I get to a pattern paper, I'm gonna peel them off. I don't need to keep them on the mat so then the next one that we're putting in is the white cardstock and this particular one i want to keep on the mat because there's going to be lots of little bits for this and i think it'll be easier to keep it where it is so just quickly while that's cutting i just wanted to say what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut piles like I did with the inserts and have piles with the strips that are for the middle and I'm going to straight away flip them so I remember you know that they're already that's the right way up and so this I've already done it the side that I want it to be so I'm going to have a pile for those and I'm going to have a pile for my little circles and then I'm going to I know these are the same but I'm going to do two piles because one is tops and one is bottoms and so it's best to try and remember that so I'm just going to flip those over like that and I'm going to create my little piles okay so that's the white done just to say as well most of my playing cards not 100% most of it is American crafts so there's a lot on here and you can see that there's a lot of odds and ends so this one being a lot I'm going to keep on this mat for now so then the next mat to go in is this little grey mat so that's that one done and I'm just going to start the next one because it's quite a lot to cut so we'll just get this one going so this one you can see it's three three big things and then one tiny little bit so I'm going to peel this one off the mat but this next one is the black like the white it's going to have a lot on it so I'm not going to be peeling off the mat for this one basically I'm going to pile up the elements that go together so you know all the cat together all the boot together etc but there are some tiny pieces like the little hearts here not sure what they belong to I'm not going to take that off and I've opened up 
this in my phone here because it's showing me the images so I can kind of start to work things out, make sure I've got the right layers. But we can start to peel off some of these bigger pieces like the boot. We know that goes with the other piece of boot so we can put those together. And we've got quite a few bases here so they're easy to pop down. A little bird. Okay, so I've start, you can see I've pulled all this off, but there's still a few bits that I'm neither not sure what they're for or they're just tiny like that. And so I'd rather leave them there for the moment. I haven't done the white ones yet, so, um, and I've now got a sheet with red on as well. And I'm just gonna start putting them out if I can, if I'm not happy that I know where they go. Um, you can just see there, there's actually another row behind that, but I'm just putting them out there, putting the pieces together. And that's how personally I would recommend you work. So you can see here, we've got 30 little piles with critters. As I said, I've sorted them. So now we're gonna start putting them together. So we're gonna put these together. I wanted to run through them because I know that sometimes putting together of the actual elements on the cuts is like which order we put them in and if you're not very familiar you might not know how to do it so I thought I'd go through them now. I know okay so for this bit as you can imagine firstly I've done quite a chunk of editing and this is the only bit in the video that I'm actually doing a voiceover I quite often do voiceovers with my videos it actually makes the editing easier for, um, and usually I can make the videos a bit shorter if I do it that way however for this one I just found um, chatting along as I was making it just seemed to happen and I did that but for this section I actually deleted all my chat because there was it was just so long and so I decided to edit it a lot so you could just see the pieces being put together and the um, different elements. I did try speeding it up even more. This is only two times sped up but it just was impossible to follow. So hopefully this is okay and not too fast for you guys and you can kind of follow along. You could have of course always pause it if you're a little bit unsure but I'm just trying to give you guys a rough idea of exactly how the layers go together on each thing but since there's so many if I did it as I said at full speed normal speed it would just be crazy so in these first couple I have been using my cosmic shimmer glue um, you'll see in a minute that I actually switched to what appears where I'm just seem to be plonking the elements down and that's because what I did was I took out my spray adhesive and I used it for that I'm still using the cosmic shimmer at this point I did find the spray adhesive a lot simpler to use in that you know you've got all the little pieces and it was just really easy to sort of pop each element down um, without worrying or thinking about where you you know whether you're putting too much adhesive down etc however what I did find later was that I felt now this could be that my spray adhesive was just old but it was meant to be a permanent adhesive and all pretty quickly I saw that some of the pieces seemed to be coming away already and I had to go back and stick them down I suspect that's my adhesive but you guys let me know what do you find with spray adhesives as I said this was a good brand it was not sort of some cheaper brand or anything and I wasn't massively happy but unfortunately I'd already completed the rest of them by then so it was too late to kind of switch back to my cosmic shimmer um, but you know let me know what you think or if you've got a really good brand of spray adhesive that you could use um, that you've always found works really well so as you can see there's quite a few little pieces as well and you're just really kind of working out what goes where quite often um, although I didn't show it I would actually put something like this one here I would sort of put it together without any adhesive first to try and just get an idea to make sure I was getting the order correct but with something like this line it was kind of pretty obvious so you'll see there look that's what I changed to that spray adhesive there so um, and as you can see it's really much simpler um, but as I was saying with the line it was kind of obvious what order that went in so I wouldn't bother to try and do that one um, 
before I put the adhesive on but something like this bird that there was a little bit more layers you might want to just check what order it was done in but on the whole if you follow what I've done I think you'll find that that was pretty much correct order you'll see if I've made any mistakes I show you and I just think show you that you know I should have done it in a different order because I pull up some elements but um, you can see as well that it does help you but you saw there it has some cut lines so it lines up those pieces for you so you know where to put them and you can see there there's like a cut line on his tummy so that's all you need to do is line up that uh, fairy lights across where that line is and it will be perfect and this one again really simple to do this one nice easy elements to add no difficulty in the order of it you just pop them on the only thing I did I think the first time was I put the hearts upside down because I was doing it as if it was a glove but obviously it really wanted to be the upside the way that um, you needed it for the card rather than what would actually be on your mitten <laughs> so then we've got a little Rudolph there it looks really cute and then we've got the little teddy now you'll sometimes see on a few pieces that it looks like I've got extra bits sometimes I put a few elements with the wrong piece so when I'm spreading them out at the beginning to show you what elements you need you might find that I haven't used them all um, and or I've ended up having to put them with the correct one you know it's sometimes you think it goes there and then you think oh no that's an extra bit so it doesn't belong on this one um, so this is that cute little bear it looks really sweet so this one was quite a lot of pieces on him and quite a lot of elements to work out and I definitely um, pre-did him because I've wanted to be sure that I layered it up correctly because you can see that there was a lot of layers that sort of overlapped and you needed to be sure that you did it in the right order. Unfortunately, I still didn't quite make it because I put his hands on um, and I should have done it first with the sheep there, but that's okay. I just tucked it in so it worked out in the end. And I think these colours are really good as well. I deliberately picked colours that would go with my different backgrounds. I didn't specifically think, oh, I'm going to put this colour background uh, with this element. I just picked colours that went with any of the backgrounds pieces. So it didn't really matter how that worked out. And this was another one that was a little bit complicated to work out. I, I did get it in the end, but I did have to fiddle around with it quite a bit to start with because there was a few pieces that was like, oh, I'm not sure what order this goes in. But eventually, and even something as simple as that little belt, just putting it up the right way. Now, I did have some pieces for his eye there, but it was just so crazy small. I just thought, I'm just going to use a pen. And then for this one, he had some really big, chunky elements. So I didn't bother spray adhesiving, spray adhesiving <laughs> him. I just, whatever the word is that I tend to be saying, I just um, stuck it down with my Cosmic Shimmer because it was just really simple. And then again, I wanted to highlight this. This didn't actually have a piece for the eye. The cut line was meant to be the bit for the eye, but I just felt it didn't show. So that's why I used the marker there. And this is the little worm. And this was one of the characters that actually wasn't a Christmas character. And I took a hat from another character and put it onto the worm to make him a Christmassy. And I just think it worked really well. You wouldn't have known that he wasn't meant to be that in the first place. And I did that on a couple of different characters, like the lion, I think, was another one. He didn't actually have a Christmas version of him. So I, but I really liked him. So I just changed him into a Christmas version. And I think it worked really, really well. Um, you can't see it on this one, but the, on the um, penguin here, we did have some cut lines to help us line up the scarf. You can see it better here on the on the um, snowman. You can see the cut lines there. And again, you just line it up so you know exactly where to position it. Same with his little nose. It just makes it really easy and quick to to know then how to angle it and everything. Really cute. Love him. And I love these little boots as well. I really wanted to go for some strong Christmas colours, which is why I went for the red with the little green parts to the sock there of the boot or the sock, whatever you want to call him. And I just thought that worked really well. And I really liked the pink cheeks onto the um, red as well. I think it just made it look really fun and bright. And I think you can almost go for those clashing colours. I think it works really well. So I'm just putting the green onto the black piece there so you can actually see the little eyes and mouth showing through rather than the red. 
and then just adding that silvery colored top piece it's just gray really but you could use some actually mirror board i think that would look really nice i didn't want to go for anything uh shiny like that i was deliberately not doing that i wanted to stick with just colors plain colors like this i felt like that would really work for the sort of idea that i was going for really with this little candy cane and then we've got our gingerbread so we've got lots of different characters that were both christmas and non-christmas and again you can see the cuts there the cut marks to help you line up where to position all those elements and you can just choose whichever colors you want i've put colors in but you can change those so you could literally go well all the red i'm going to change to green or whatever and you can literally just change that really simply on the Cricut or just not bother changing it on the screen but just put a different piece of cardstock down um so you you can mess around with it quite a lot this was another one that wasn't a Christmas character and I changed him into a Christmas character this was I think a Christmas one I th I'm sure he was anyway um but very cute I loved him and I really liked this color combination actually the gray there was quite a bit of um, grays and aquas in my Christmas papers so I wanted to um, put the two together as well as putting the aqua in some different elements so I tended to have two different kind of color themes within my pa pattern papers the sort of sort of cool tones like the aquas the silver the whites and the pale blues and then I had the reds and the greens and that kind of tone of colors so I tended to have my characters in those two families but I also mixed up a little bit as well um, just to so that I didn't have to ha I didn't sit there counting out oh I've got this many cards in the blues and this many cards in the reds so I didn't worry sort of do the same for my characters so here you can see I've got a bit of green and a bit of the blues so I could have used him on either so it was really deliberately just mixing it up but also having some that were not they were distinctly in one category or the other so here we've got another one where we've got the black where it's just to show that accent of the eyes and the mouth through and then the hands go down next and then you've got the little cuffs and you'll see here the points actually point inwards towards his body and you'll notice here that the little boot I'd got a catch when it cut I could have recut it but I really didn't think it was necessary and I just used a marker and filled that gap in and actually once it dried you really didn't notice it at all and then we just put on the little buttons which I thought was an adorable finishing touch and you can't see it in the picture there but they actually had like a little cross in the middle of them like the stitching now you can see here the little tiny tiny cut of the mouth there for the Santa I mean it's crazy small and you could just ignore that and use the marker again to create your little mouth um, I don't know why they didn't cut it through like they did the eyes and there you'll see this is one of the sections where I was saying I, I did it slightly out of order and you needed to do the belt before you did the rest of it and then I realized once I put the belt on because the belt had some cut lines which I'm just pointing out there it actually showed me that I put the whole face too high so I just moved that down but I wasn't sure why we couldn't have had the mouth cut out in both the white of his beard and the pink underneath I think that would have been easier um, I did actually place that little mouth on with a bit of glue rather than used a marker I thought I'd see how it worked and it did come out okay I didn't think there was a problem with it but it was just crazy tiny I mean there was a good chance um, that that wasn't going to cut to be honest but it did um, but it, potential really was um, perhaps to just use the marker so here we're just doing our little snowman and I thought this one I really liked this snowman I thought he was adorable I think this was one of the ones I got through Cricut Access because I don't think I owned this one but I had that um, couple of months free Cricut Access so um, I just used it for these cards and there we go with the little hearts and the bobble on the top and we got quite a few layers actually on this now you'll see I've put the um, nose the carrot on but I did it wrong so then I altered it and put the little coal on for the eyes again you might want to use a marker for the eyes they didn't come out too bad though I found they weren't 
too bad at all and um you could use gems as well if you wanted instead but as i say they cut out good i didn't find they had any nicks or anything and then i think this was another one i can't remember if i didn't add this branch as a separate element or whether it came with it i can't quite remember but anyway i think it looks really cute um with this little owl sitting on his branch and i just used some of the cosmic shimmer for that just to be sure that he sat really firmly on his little branch there okay there they all are don't they look fab when you see them like that doesn't it look amazing and you know it's obviously it is a little bit of work but a lot of the work has been what I've already done for you which is the planning part I mean that was what really took the time sorting all of that out so if you use the download that will definitely save you a lot of time because I've done all the working out of the colours and everything and all the images and all of that stuff so that obviously means you can literally just get on and cut okay, so just before I go on to the cards I'm just going to use this Cosmic Twinkles um sparkle star twinkles and i'm going to go over some of these and put some glitter on it's christmas if you can't put glitter on at christmas when can you and i think that this means that by the time i come ready to put them on the cards it's going to be dry so that's going to be a lot easier so i found these i thought these were gorgeous so i'm going to pop these down so we need some, I'm going to actually use some of the glitter glue because that will dry and it will hold it in place and then if any bits squelch out the side, it doesn't matter. There we go, look, they pretty. Okay, so I've popped our toppers to one side and I've started to lay out the actual pieces of my pattern cardstock. So what I'm doing is I took the pile that it didn't really matter which of these two they're identical but I took one of these piles which I've now called the bottom half of my card and I've literally laid them out and it goes right down there to the whole full length of my desk. If you've seen my lodger video you know my craft desk is really long. It's um, probably nearly six foot long so it's I've probably got a foot and a half one end that so it starts here so there's about a foot and a half that end that I haven't used but the rest of it I've literally laid them out and I've got 15 on the top row and 15 on the bottom row and I've laid those out so then the next job is to take the top halves which are the same as the bottoms but mix it up and put them so that it looks nice so you know you might not want to have two of those you might want to have a gray i don't know one of these uh gray snowflakes for example so i'm going to fiddle around i'm going to put those on okay so that's the top half done i literally just whiz through it i didn't spend much time thinking about it because i think if you overthink it it's just not going to work what i tried to do was like with this heavily patterned thing so something like this then to go with something a little bit more simplistic um because only not because i didn't think the two heavy patterns would go together but actually what i didn't want to end up with was say you know the snowflake and just this one here which is just a little bit too plain so i was trying to make sure there was a strong and perhaps a less strong one together um and obviously colors i've kept like all the bluesy colors here and the reds and greens they're kind of up there you can just see a little bit there um so the next layer we've got is the little um crossbar okay so that was even speedier i literally i'm not kidding i probably i'm not even being that three minutes i should think um tops five um just to put these out i'm literally just whizzing through it but uh, now i'm going to be doing the circles which is the last part um let me show you actually let me do these ones that are in front of you so that you can just see how speedy that i'm trying to be with these well uh, that one there that looks good on that i think we need something stronger over here maybe this is I think where it gets a little bit harder that one would go nicely over there you can't see that one but I think I keep coming back to that one so let's just put it on there 
that one there. That hasn't got any blue in it, so I'm not... Yeah, that would go... Oh, no, that's the same idiot. <laughs> there we go, that one there. You have to be careful because there's next door and you don't want to think in your eye that you're using what's next door rather than what's there. I think that one will go on there nicely. So I need to double check actually on some of these. I think I'm okay. I just thought I didn't check the bands to make sure they're not matching because I want everything to obviously be different. So I'm going to put this grey one down here. One there, and that one there, that one there, and that one there. That doesn't work, so we put that one there and that one. No, that's oh no, it's not. Uh, let me see, I just might see if that looks better. Yeah, I think that looks better that way around. Okay, so that's literally how quick I'm being. So you can see that's how speedy. I think if you literally try and think about it more than that, you're just gonna go nuts trying to work it out. Okay, you can't see this half, so I'm literally gonna go and do this half and then we'll be back. Okay, so there they are all sorted. So the next thing I guess is we need to put our little critters on top see what I've got so I've got some bluey ones so we can shove them this end the red and pink definitely that end so anyway I'm gonna start sorting these out and again I'm gonna try to be pretty much as quick to be honest okay I'm gonna go and do the other end uh, with the ones that are definitely greens and reds for that end and then we'll see what's left and what gaps we have left Okay, so it is actually quite late and I haven't got very good lighting at the moment because my batteries are running out. But um, you can see we've got these all sorted out here. And I'm pleased with that. They seem to have come together okay. So um, the next thing I need to do is my insert. So I need to put the insert with the correct and topper so for example here holly jolly christmas i've got a holly one down here so i need to just pop that i'm just going to pop it on top here look here we've got santa baby so we're going to put that with santa um, so i'm just going to make my way through these and put them out okay so i've picked out some card bases originally i was just going to have these craft card bases for the cards and but in any event I didn't have enough of them I could have made my own from some craft card but to be honest with this many couldn't be bothered and <laughs> I decided instead of having all the craft which I couldn't do anyway um, that I'd have some white and then I thought oh I'll have some red as well because I had enough to do um, half and half of these but I just thought to throw in the red would be really fun so I need to fold these in half and then I need to pop them down with the right card because obviously the reds won't really go very well with these up here. Okay, so there they are all done. So basically I did the red first and I just picked the ones that I thought would look nice with the red base because some of them were just so much red on there already with the pattern paper that I felt like the red card background would be lost but there were some that were sort of more green with the little bits of red in so I thought that would work quite well. Once they were done I went and looked at the rest and I picked which would go for the uh, craft card stock because um, for example this little bear here it's going to look good with the craft because he's a little brown bear so it kind of works so anything that was like that I put the brown ones down and then I ended up with like two spares um, not spare but two left and then I just chose which those would go on the best and then the rest I added the white to so that was kind of my thinking process for that so now we've got to start putting these cards together so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make some space here and then I'm going to put the inserts in so let's first of all make some space so I can actually work. Okay, so I'm going to be using my Cosmic Shimmer. So I'm literally going to pick that up from the pile there and take the insert, put that in, and then I'm going to put it back in position so I don't lose, because obviously the insert must go with the right card. Like that. Pop that down. 
and that's that one done. That's over there we're putting back. I'm gonna go through and do all of those because I think putting the inserts in and you watching me do that is gonna be as boring as heck. So I'm gonna do all of those and then I will come back to you. Okay, so that is all the inserts done. So that's one on the red one, looks kind of cool. And this is on the craft. So what we've got here is the two layers. Let me bring that up a little bit, move you two out of the way. And when you kind of push them up against each other, it fits perfectly because that's how I designed it. Um, but if your card sizes are slightly different, if you're working on you know, US letter size or whatever, then there's no issue with obviously overlapping or if it's slightly bigger, separating. Because don't forget, as long as you don't separate it too much, you've got this band across the center, so you're gonna cover that gap so you can get away with it either way. So we're going to first of all stick these two layers down. Normally I say to you obviously do one pro bit and then do it on all of them before you move on. So you might think oh well you should just stick the bottom on all of them and then come back and do the tops. But obviously for this we need to make sure that it's lined up correctly. So the only way to do that is to put both of those pieces on at the same time to make sure that the border is all correct. So this is our top one and this is the bottom one. I kind of need to do them at the same time just so that we can be sure that they are lined up. I need to move that. So that should be like that I reckon and then that one should be about there and that seems to have worked. The reason I thought that was there was because the I'm making it even space here and here, so that was why I thought, yeah, that must be that position. And then... and that is the last one. I used the roller on all of them, um, just to be sure that they were all nice and flat down, because it's wet glue and it just worked really well. So that's that done. So now we're on to our next layer, which is our little centerpiece here. So we want that to be lined up in the middle, just go by eye, as what I would suggest. And then I'm going to put tweezers on there. And then a scribble of glue. Now this has got writing on now, although there's technically not a right way up with the writing, sometimes just because of the way it's been cut, there is one way that just looks better than the other. So it's worth just double checking like so. And then I'm going to do the same again and just run over with my little roller here, just want to make sure it's straight and there's that bit done. So again, as before, I'm going to go through whoops, all of them and put those middles on. Okay, so that's all of the centre ones done. So now we've got the actual circles. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to and I'm not going to be too worried about going so close to the edge because that just gives a little lift at the edges. It, again, it just gives that little bit of uh, dimension, just having that little bit not quite stuck down 100% perfectly. Okay, so that's all my circles put down and I definitely made a point of not pushing the outsides down. You can see that. I just think it gives a little bit of dimension. So the next thing that we need to do is put our critters down. So for that I definitely want the 3D, so I've got some 3D foam here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my foam on the back of all my critters first. Okay, so I have put the foam on all of them and I have peeled the backing off, so I literally all I have to do is stick them down and I thought we could do that together just because then you get to see each card as well so now normally as you know I would put um, cosmic shimmer glue on the back of the foam tape 
but this is really good foam actually I'm really pleasantly surprised and it doesn't seem to be a problem so I'm going to just stick it down like so I think these are coming out really nicely I'm surprised at how much I like them there we go and then you can see I've put the glitter on it as you saw I did that and it dried and then I put a little gem on as well that'll do me And what I would say is if you're watching on YouTube I would definitely go over to my blog post if you're on YouTube as I say you need to just go to the paragraph below this video and you will see where it says show more and if you click on that it'll open up and you will see a link to the blog post and the reason I say go there is I will have photos of everything of the all the cards here and some of the insides and also close-ups so you'll get a really good view of them which sometimes I don't think you always get here on the video in the same way as a photo for a, you know for a finished result I think it always looks better I'm just putting a bit of adhesive on that string there and sticking that down because again it gives it dimension but I also think it just protects that from pinging up and being caught on anything. And there we go. There we go. There we go. That's very cute, isn't it? Hope, he, hope you have a hoot this Christmas. So, Merry Christmas. He's adorable, isn't he? To be honest, I'm really pleased with how these turned out. I think the, the cuts are looking really cute, but it just wasn't 100% on the colouring. And there it is, that's our last one. Winter Wonderland. Okay, so there we are. That is all 30 cards done and dusted. And I mean, it has been a long process, but it hasn't been as long as I thought it would be. The main amount of time actually for me was that it took longer because I was filming. Had I not been filming, it would have been a lot, lot quicker. And actually sort of as part from that sort of slowing down the making part of it, the main sort of part that took the time was the actual design part. So anyway, that is it for today's project. Um, don't forget if, I'm sure I've mentioned it, that on my blog post under the pro um, my signature I'll have a list of the products used but included in that I will include the download for this Cricut file so that if you don't want to bother doing what I spent ages doing and sorting it all out it will be there for you and uh, you can download it and it's already the design is done please be aware you're only downloading the design the actual cuts you have to own if you don't own them that's fine Cricut will still show it to you it's just the same as normal if you go into Cricut store and you pick up something you don't own when you get to the part where it says uh, you click on make it and then you go through to the mats before you sort of can go any further it says well if you want to use these cuts it's going to cost you x and you can see what cuts they are that you're paying for but anyway I hope you have enjoyed as I said earlier do go over to the blog post for 
the photographs as well as obviously the links that I just spoke about and uh, yeah all that will be on there so as I said about 50 times I hope you've enjoyed thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon bye for now bye <laughs>